right, it's been... All right, all right. So I think we are live now. So we are here with um, Lady Omanessa, and we are also here with Inesha Bradshaw. So um, we're going to give you guys a few minutes to try to jump in to see if anybody is going to log on and give everybody an opportunity so that we don't leave anybody out because we want to make sure that everybody is included. So we're going to give it about a minute before we actually get started. All right, I think I just seen us. So we're gonna wait for a few more minutes. I'm gonna log in my phone. So I think that's how we gotta watch and see if people is in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are gonna go ahead and get started. So I am going to go ahead and run our intro and then we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this conversation. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Queen's Lair Christian Talk Show Live. We are live today, baby. This is our first live, so I'm really excited about our first live. Usually, we have our shows pre-recorded, and they play, you know, at, on certain platforms. But today, we are live, and I wanted to go live because I wanted you guys to engage and talk to some of the authors in the Rides Up Women Who Lead Building Legacy Anthology. And so today we have with us Lady Omanessa as well as Inesha Bradshaw. So talk to her. Take, say hi to everybody. <laughs> hey. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's see what um, first I want to do is do some introductions. So first tell us each one of you exactly who both of you are. We'll start with you, um, Inesha. Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from and what you do. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'm so happy to be here with the both of you and sharing this platform. Um, like she said, I'm Anisha Bradshaw. I am the credit specialist and co-founder of In The Moment Financial Services, um, where we do every, we, we're a one-stop shop. We handle taxes for personal and business, as well as the same thing for credit. We do personal and business anywhere from starting your LLC to business consultations. We do it all bookkeeping, literally. Um, we're that one-stop shop. We do virtual as well as in person. And um, I'm actually now um, known as a nationally renowned credit specialist. And I've been nice. helping so many people. I'm so excited for this opportunity and where God has led me here. I am um, Philadelphia born and raised. And yes. um, my biological father is from <laughs> Ghana. So I'll be headed there um, next month. So super, super excited to see family out there and visit and take my family, my children there to see more. Um, so that's a little bit about me. And thank you again for this opportunity. Absolutely. And I am super excited because I want to bring up um, each of your um, bios as well. And so before I do, though, I want to hear from you, Lady Omanessa. Tell us a little about who you are, where you're from and what it is that you do. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for this opportunity. There is so much about who I am. I am like an onion. <laughs> <laughs> but, you got many um, layers, huh? <laughs> So many, but I am just a woman who loves life. I am called to emotional healing. And so basically I have been wounded in so many aspects of my life and God has used every single one of those experiences to bring me to where I am. I am, um, I was born in Toledo, Ohio, um, and I was raised in Nigeria just for a short minute and um, moved back to the U.S. and I live in New York now. I am a writer, I am a singer, um, and I am very, very heavy on death ministry, anything that has to do with mm -hmm. thanatology and emotional healing, encouraging people to use all of their talents and all of their gifts, encouraging people to register their companies, encouraging people to, to die empty and to leave a legacy 
and leaving this world um, making peace with every man. Um, mm. Just recently, I just got out of the hospital because I was diagnosed for acute kidney failure and coming mm. out of that hospital and coming out of the hospital really uh, like took me to another level in my ministry and in my walk with God. So I'm very, very excited because now I'm writing another um, book, which will probably be like my seventh book. I am a wow. woman. Um, um, if it's, and I purposely use like set that number, not, not out of bragging, but to encourage people to to use their pain. So in telling me to introduce myself, I am a catalyst and I'm somebody who uses my pain for everything to 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 bring out my albums, to write my um, books, to encourage people. Um, even in my organization now, it's all about emotional healing. And I'm mm -hmm. currently a reigning queen with Women of Achievement. So I've been doing a lot of traveling. I've been doing a whole lot, um, and it's the same message, which is leave a legacy, die empty. Yeah, and I love that because that is so needed. Unfortunately, in this day and age, there's so many deaths between violence, between sicknesses, between diseases. People need to know how to deal with death. And it's so scary because if we're all honest with ourselves, death is a scary thing to even talk about. Even when you should prepare for it in advance, most people don't want to talk about a will. They don't want to talk about insurance and life insurance because they're so afraid that means you're speaking it into existence or something like that. <laughs> because that's really, it's, it's a real serious situation. And so I just want to stop real quick to say hi to Aisha. Hi, Rashida. Thank you so much for joining the joining the show and watching us today. We are really excited about the authors that we have of Rise Up, Women Who Lead, Building Legacy. And before we go on, I do want to bring up each of you are individually, your bios. I'm going to start with one. And this one is for... Omanessa and Omanessa was named by her father while her mother named her Shinwei, God's own, in the Libo dialect of Mbueno, Nigeria. And I hope I'm saying it right. Omanessa has definitely lived a unique and different life. She is a preacher, ordained pastor, ordained prison chaplain, music minister, passionate writer, and certified life coach. That is absolutely amazing, Omanessa. So thank you so much. Um, tell us a little bit about your um, your music ministry and stuff like that. Okay, so I just released my, my fourth album, which um, came out in April of this year. And this particular album, I think it has 12... 12 songs. It was recorded in three different countries and in different states. My favorite song there is Nothing Happens in the Grave. And you can get it mm. from any music outlet. You can get it on YouTube, on Pandora, on Spotify, um, on Apple. And my music videos as well are on there. I pretty much write most of my songs. Um, and um and my music ministry has has pretty much grown from American Idol to uh, the Apollo to Sunday Best. I've, I've I've like I did all of that until I went independent and um, just started to minister and travel the world and became a music evangelist and then now a preaching evangelist as well. Amen. That's beautiful. I love it. We're doing big things, and this is what we're supposed to do in the kingdom of God: is go out. That's what we're supposed to do. Not stay in our little comfortable walls. We're supposed to go out. So let me bring you up, Inesha. So this is Inesha Bradshaw. She is also one of the co-authors of Rise Up, Women Who Lead, Building Legacy. Inesha is a credit specialist and co-founder of In The Moment Financial Services, a Black women-owned business. She is passionately committed to educating minority communities on financial literacy and entrepreneurism. So thank you so much again, Inesha, for joining us on the show. So tell us a little bit about your credit. Like, tell us, because, you know, that's another very <laughs> vital and important thing while we are here is because we always need to have some type of good credit for what we need to do. So tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, let me give it back to you, Lady Omanessa. Like, listen, from one queen to another, 
that is amazing. Um, everything that you're doing is super, super important. I need to probably read some of your books because I find it hard um, to just help somebody else when they're going through, you know, yes. death and everything like that. So I, I'm, I uh, applaud you for talking about something that most people don't want to talk about and make it in the ministry. Um, like you, I myself think that the financial realm of things is part of my ministry why I'm so passionate about it, why I choose to help so many people, why when someone gets a consultation with me or does anything, it's not your average type of um, consultation is because it's my ministry. So mm -hmm. um, the funny thing is when I first started and I was building like my Instagram up and everything like that, um, I actually started as God and credit because I used to tell people, you might get God first before credit, you know, <laughs> um, because I really know that if God is trying to use me in that moment and at that time, then, you know, I always pray that he uses me as a vessel. And so what I found at first when he brought this and I talk about it in the book as well, brought me being a, a credit specialist or helping people with their credit or whatever. When I was just starting as a side hustle, right, of how many businesses start, I really was like, well, Lord, I don't really want to go into the churches talking about finances. I, I grew up a PK, a preacher's kid. Right. So, you know, people don't even want to talk about ties, let alone credit and those personal things. But God, yeah, really put that's me, true. Put it, yeah, he put it in my heart to really just minister to these people to say, like, a lot of people are praying out there saying, Lord, give me a house. Lord, give me this. Give me that. And they're not doing their part. And so um, it just became um, and I heard one thing that really stuck with me over the years. And I share this a lot. This story is that when and you probably heard this joke is a, a long running thing that it was a gentleman who was um, drowning. And he's like, I'm, I'm asking God to help me. And he sent the boat. He said, no, I'm waiting on God. Sent the plane mm -hmm. no, I'm waiting on God, helicopter waiting on God until he died. And went to heaven and said, well, why didn't you come and save me? And God said, I sent all those things. And yep. so today they are sending this show. If you need a sign for anything that we're talking about, this is your sign. You know, he sent people like us to be in people's lives and to minister. I too, Lady Omanessa, am an evangelist, a licensed ordained evangelist. And we are going to share his word because if nothing else, um, I learned that entrepreneurism, credit, finances is all in the Bible throughout. So um, just to be able to look at the Bible that way, I said, God, you really have downloaded something in me. And I've been able to go from church to church and just place to place sharing God's word, but also being able to minister into people's finances and situations. So that's that's my passion. That's my role. And that's something that I'm so glad God allowed that to be my ministry. Yeah, and that's beautiful. I think that's a great thing because a lot of people don't realize God has, we all have some type of anointing and calling on our lives for something specific to the audience that God has for us to reach. And so we have to realize that even when it comes to credit, when it comes to death, when it comes to all of these things, there's a purpose for it. And we need to be prepared so that we can do what we need to do while we're here living so that while we are living, we're like um, Omanessa said, I love that Lady Omanessa said she wants you to go to the grave empty, which means yes. you have poured out everything that God has place into you into this world and you're leaving emptied out and leaving behind a legacy which is what this book is all about and so talking about the book tell us a little bit about why you said um yes to the book yes to the dress but yes to the book so <laughs> i'll start with you lady omanessa because you are a vet you have written seven books like you're a vet this is my first <laughs> book okay i wanted to all as well i was blessed and honored to be on the um the book as well but this was my first book my first chapter and i had to pray deeply about what to write about because all of us have different parts to our story and i wanted to make sure that whatever part that god wanted me to write was the part that was going to impact somebody's life and not just something I thought was just a good story or in, entertaining. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be something that's going to be impactful. And so I had to really pray. So tell me a little bit about why you say yes, um, Omen Lady Omanessa, especially after you've written seven books already. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was an offer that that I couldn't pass because it is my passion to reach out to people. And like I said, I am a catalyst, so I see myself as one. So when I was given an opportunity to, to um, co-write a book that had to do with rising up, it like I had an itch to share how I was knocked down. 
And so that was what was passionate in my soul and in my heart. And that was the message that I um, had to to give. And in my chapter, I really covered a whole lot from infertility to my relationship mm-hmm. with my mom um, and to just just so many um, times that I wanted to give up and times that I really did give up. And I gave a whole lot of tips and a lot of clues on how to rise up. And so agreeing to do this book was a no brainer. It really was. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's uh, definitely an amazing thing because your stories are all going to make a big difference. And before yes. we go into you, um, Inesha, I'm going to just take a quick break real quick and then we'll come back and want to hear from you, Inesha, on what you, your reasoning was for saying yes to the book. All right. That was just a beautiful little um, promo for the book. The book, you can get it on Amazon and you can buy the Kindle version as well as the hard copy on Amazon. And I'm not sure if you ladies have other platforms that you use. Do you have other platforms where you're selling the book right now as well? Um, Well, yes, on Amazon. And then I'm selling it on my WhatsApp. Um, I have been very, very heavy on my WhatsApp because I have a lot of followers on there. And Mm -hmm. of course, on my Facebook as well. And there is something called Okada Books. Um, Mm -hmm. and, And so that's what I've been using for now. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So yes. So make sure you guys check out those platforms and maybe a little later as we get closer, um, more into the show, we'll try to get you guys to at least give your information. So where people can reach out to you. So let's go back to you, Inesha. Tell us why you said yes to the book. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, when I got, this is, I'm like you, Kelly, this is my first time, you know, writing a book. I know God told me I was going to be writing several books. So I just said, okay, God, this is you. Let me get my feet wet. I'll take that opportunity. But, um, it was a little difficult at first because I wanted to, you know, make sure I was writing the right thing. So many different, um, aspects I can come from and different stories that I have. And I said, God, what is it that you'll have me to do? And it's what my passion is. It led to me talking about entrepreneurism, um, and, you know, being able to be obedient to what God called you to, even Mm -hmm. though I wasn't sure I told God no at first, you know, I was like, listen, God, Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, I don't know if this is for me. And sometimes we just jump into some some things naturally. Now, I had to think about it, you know, and talking to my mother and everything like that. God prepared me for this. I've been a, a published poet before. I had did several um, oratorical competitions and speeches. I would write. I would do different things. I know God called me too, but was this it? But um, the lady that we're all connected with, uh, Dr. Ne- um, Nefertina Serrano. Dr. Nefertina Serrano. Listen, (laughs) she has been nothing short of an amazing mentor of mine. And so I knew I had to give my best with coming. Um, I'm a a networker by heart. Like I'm always talking to the people and finding out how other people can connect. Um, I want to be the plug to connect a lot of other people, even if I can't connect necessarily for myself. Um, So this, I said, this gives me an opportunity just in another platform to help somebody really reach the level they needed to, because going into entrepreneurship is not easy going into, you know, um, trying to figure out this really what he had for you. And you're trying to build followers and build a business from scratch is not easy, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. So I wanted to really talk about those, um, those moments of pain, struggle, to really moments of triumph as well, to know that it's possible, um, being relatable, but knowing that it's possible. And so in there, I share my most famous um, line and story of how most people know me is from Section 8 to commercial real estate, just to share people that what you are does not have to be who you are going to be. And if you just be obedient to your calling and what God knows you to 
people are going to flock to you. So literally, um, my business has grown over the years, you know, um, with the commercial space to it growing, to having corporate accounts, to so many different things. When I, when he, God brought it to me to start the business, I was like, okay, guy, in a couple of years, you know, and figure some things out. So this book opportunity gave me a platform and opportunity just to kind of tell my story. And um, I thank Dr. Serrano for just pulling out and seeing the greatness that was inside of me and allow me to, you know, brighten my light a little bit more. Cause sometimes we dim our light down and say, Oh, you know, like not me, you know, I'm not with in the caliber of everyone else, but um, I just thank her for the opportunity and showing that um, I can and I will and I must, and I did. And so this is a start to my book journey as well. So lady Onessa, you're an inspiration to me as well. Yes, I have to say both of you ladies are an inspiration and it makes me feel good. I can relate to you 100% when you say that you feel like you're not on that same calendar because I'm sitting here looking at all of the ladies on this dog on anthology and I'm like, I'm in this too. <laughs> right. <But> that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't trying to downplay myself like I ain't nothing, but I'm like, wait, these some real big hitters we got on this book. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's amazing. And we're not about to go ahead and preach and go to church. But I want to tell you all that the Bible says, if you lift him up, that he will draw all men unto you. And as you are lifting him up, those people that you talk about is flocking to you. It's flocking to you because of the anointing that's emanating from you. And they're, em yeah. they're attracted to that anointing and they're attracted to who God is that you're showing through who you're do who you are what you're doing and he also says hold on wait a minute i forgot the scripture i was about to say oh it said let your light so shine amongst all men that they will lift up your father in heaven you know what i'm saying so you have to you know let your light so shine before all men so and that's one thing that i've always struggled with because to me i've always felt like it's not about me and i don't want people to look at me and be like oh girl you doing this and you doing that oh and god is using you no it's not about me it's just simply about god and glorifying him yes. but i have to learn that as i do that and that's something that i've struggled with and i'm still trying to work on it is not being um, ashamed or not being sad and not shying away because it's not so much that it's me, but it's the God that's in me that people are seeing. And because of that and allowing him to use me, it's going to people, people are going to see a difference. They're going to see what is happening in your life and say, well, how after I know what you have been through back here, are you right here right now? How in the world after you done got... You, you know, women have gotten raped. They have gotten molested, abused by family members. They have gotten people murdered and killed. But you still going to stand here, even in the church. This stuff is happening even in the, the church building. Yes. But you will still stand there and believe in God. How do you do that? And this is what we need to talk about and tell people is that we're not exempt from life. We're still going to have things happen to us in life. But what I want to hear from you ladies is everybody sees where we are and they're like wow that's amazing that's great but let's talk about their struggle let's talk about before you got to where you are now and being real that it wasn't easy to get here and it's still not even easy while you're here we still have our challenges and struggles so let's talk a little about um i think you just talked so let's talk to you lady omanessa tell a little bit about what your struggles have been that god has blessed you to make it through and hopes that somebody's going to hear that and be able to say, wow, if she could do it, I could do it. Thank you. I have had a lot of struggles, but the one that used to really bother me was being married for so long, being a minister, laying my hands on people, praying for people to have children, and I don't have a child. That mm -hmm. doesn't bother me anymore. It really used to. I have lost triplets from an IVF, a failed IVF. I have lost twins mm -hmm. from a failed IVF. I have lost one single baby um, from an IUI. And then I have lost one from a natural con conception. So I think that's seven. Um, and I have learned in the midst of that, that God knows what he is doing. Because mm -hmm. now in my life, when I look back on those times that I was trying, when I look back, to be very honest, at that time in my life, I was not ready to have a child. I just wanted to have a child. Yeah. But at that time in my life, I was not ready. It Now, this is in hindsight. So I have learned that God knows what he's doing. That's something mm -hmm. that I have. 
Another thing that I have dealt with was that when I had moved to New York, this is me coming from a bishop's home. This is me being an only child. This is me living in mansions, never wanting for anything. And then I come to New York and I'm homeless. <laughs> mm. like it just didn't make any sense. So God is preparing you in every situation that you're in. It's a preparation. Every situation is a preparation. Yeah. That's it. Every situation is a preparation. It's a preparation for where you want to go. And it's a preparation for where God wants to take you. And I yes. think that when you focus, when, when your focus is on how you can just get to the other side, then you're fine. But don't worry what's, what's, what's on the other side, because on the other side is, is, is like, is cream, de la cream. Okay. But it's how to get there. That's like, just know that God knows what he's doing and just know that he's got you um, mm -hmm. struggles with with rent struggles with my health. I have a rod in my spinal cord from scoliosis and God has used me to heal people. There was somebody mm -hmm. who had AIDS and I prayed for him. No, I didn't even pray for him. I sang. I sang like I was singing and he got healed from AIDS. And then I'm here afflicted with scoliosis. And scoliosis is when your spinal cord is shaped like, like a perfect S. And they mm -hmm. broke the two sides of the letter S and then they put a rod in it. And at the beginning, like when I am at the airport, it always makes a loud noise. And I felt embarrassed and angry at God at that because not only did he not heal me, now he's embarrassing me everywhere. Mm. <laughs> Wow. And then yeah. I did get to realize that every time that I heard that voice, it was that 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 sound. It was a reminder that God had did something for me. It had been a reminder that I pulled through. It had been a reminder that I rose up. Um, and so I have that rod in my spinal cord now. And every time that I'm ministering, that rod is with me. When I'm crying, that rod mm -hmm. is with me. When I'm talking to people and talking now, that rod is in me. So sometimes the scars that we have uh, or the wounds that we have will not kill us. But God allows a scar to be there to humble us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these are just a, just a few. Like I've been hungry. I have been dead broke. I had been dead beat. Um, I had been angry with God. Um, there was a time that my marriage was just up and down, up and down, just like a lot of marriages. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I had to stay firm to see the reason why I was put here. The secret is in rising up and asking God how, how you should rise up. I have like three points, but I think that you're going to ask me like some more and then I can bring those. Okay. Three. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I think it's amazing because, you know, people don't, people take what happens to them and they take it personal, but we have to realize our life is not our own. Our life is Christ and the purpose that he has of it. And so there's the saying when they say, if you ever want to see God laugh, tell them your, what your plans are. Well, it's, it's interesting because a lot of times we come up with our own plans and God is like, baby, that's not what I want you to do. That's not what I need you over there. But we are so focused on what we want to do and how we want things to go and have a nerve to get mad and frustrated with God and say, well, Lord, why you allow this to happen? Why you this and why that? And it's actually he's sitting there like, but, but that's not what I want you to do anyway. That's not yeah. the way you were supposed to go in the first place. And so we have to realize that just like you said, sometimes we are dealing with a thorn in our flesh, so to speak. And that thorn in the flesh is just something that we have to deal with. It allows us to, like you say, humble us, to allow us to know that God is still in control. He has control over all things, over our lives, over everything. And even in that, if he so chooses, he can heal us too. But if he so yeah. chooses, just like the, the, the three Hebrew boys, they went into that fire. Now, God chose to allow them to go in that fire. But he didn't see fit to have them get burned. So they were able to walk out, but they still had to go in there. They still probably felt the heat. They still probably were scared because they had to walk in there with all of the flames. So we still have to face our fires sometimes. We still have to go in there, but we just have to trust God through it. So let me shut up and go ahead and Nisha, you go ahead and tell your struggle. <laughs> yes, tell yes, your so, struggles. <laughs> uh, gosh, when you were reflecting, well, I was reflecting while you guys were talking here and uh, I just want to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, and I say that because I actually, my dad died before I was even born. 
Oh, wow. Um, I was upset with God a little younger because I didn't understand. I couldn't meet him. And then when people say, oh, you look like him, you act like him. I'm like, yeah, I didn't meet him. So I would get angry all over again. So that was one of my, my first like real memorable pains that I just was like, how am I supposed to do this? And then as a teenager, and me and my mom have always been really close and had a really good relationship. But the moments that I decided to be angry at my mom, I would get angry at the Lord and say, I can't even go live with my dad because wow. he's not yeah. there, you know? Yeah. So I had those, you know, those moments. I'm glad that I had my mother, you know, um, to raise me. But it was just something I had to struggle with for a really long time. And God bless me to have who I call my father. Um, I don't call him a stepfather, who is also my bishop, who is just nothing short of amazing. And I thank God for him. Um, yeah. for what he's done in my life as well. Um, so that struggle to, you know, have that father figure in my life and different things would happen. I mean, I struggle with. The, and even with my father's death, he died at a young age, around 21 or so. And wow. I drove, I've been driving since I was 15, 16 years old. So the devil always put in my head that I'm going to die like my father did. And when I had turned 21, I had one of the biggest car accidents of my entire life. And I went through, I fell asleep behind the wheel because I was working so much. Um, I drove through 16 lanes of traffic. And when I tell you that I hit, my car showed that I had a median. I did not wake up from there, but it went into a soft little Oh, thing. wow. I was able to jump out. And when the cops came, somebody said, somebody's praying for you. You know, you must wow. believe in God because nothing was wrong with me. Everything was wrong with my car, but nothing was wrong with me. 16 <laughs> lanes of traffic means that at least, you know, eight of those lanes had the green light somehow, some way, whether it was mine yeah. or the other one. And for me not to have harmed anyone or harm myself or no one to harm me, I am so grateful to God. And I say these things um, because those are the things that led up to being knowing that, wait, that's when fear started really showing itself and saying, you're a liar. Yeah. And look back at what God did and say, absolutely not. I refuse to stop driving behind wheel. I still drive. Um, many of my other people who drive me, they tell me, oh, I'm, I'm one of the best drivers there because I refuse to let fear, you know, intervene in my life. Now, fear has come up in multiple ways because, you know, if he can't get you one way, he's going to try a different way. You I got try. married. You're right. <laughs> I got married. I've been divorced. Through that divorce, it was, I went through one of the ugliest periods of my life. Um, because yeah. I didn't want children. So I'm I so this is one of the big things, and I want to share this. Lady Omanessa wanted kids. I did not want kids, and I had two. Wow. And so I used to ask God, why would you give me kids when there's people out there who wanted them? Mm. And so I had a big struggle with God with that because I was like, that's not like you said, I had my own plan. Had your own plan. Now, mind you, I grew up a PK, my grandfather was a bishop, I knew all these things. And I still wanted to be like, God, tap me in. I did not discuss this with you. When I prayed about my life, that, <laughs> that was not what I wanted. <laughs> you know, anything like that, or to have a husband like, like I had at the time. And so I had to grow to love and be content in whatever state. And that took a lot of growing pain because I had to learn to love my kids because I was like, well, I'm not going to be a bad mother because I didn't ask for them. I had to learn how to be grateful for the opportunity. And the funny thing is, you're talking about struggling. I still struggle to this day and just being really honest and transparent. I don't think I ever talked about it publicly. I'm now a happy married woman. I, I, I talk about that in my book. I could I had picked a better person. Um, but now he has no children. I'm, I mean, I wanted to give him one. And mm. I'm not conceiving We've been married yeah. for four years. So could you imagine telling God I don't want any? And how could you give me a kiss? Uh, now going to God, I'm like, oh, by the way, you know. <laughs> Forget all of that other that stuff. That conversation, I you know, right. how you delete the text if you write everything. Like, I can't <laughs> delete it to now being in that situation. And it's like, what does that look like? So in full transparency, these public things. And, and that's why I talk about entrepreneurship. That's why I talk about biblical things because we think that entrepreneurship, that they're not humans, right? Or you own a business, you're not human and go through these different things on day to day or whatever struggle. I'm still trying to heal from going through depression, seasonal depression. So I was going to the gym and I was inspiring people. And then I was like, I, I don't know if I can even wake up out of my bed this early because the sun is not even up. And having those 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 conversations to be like, well, I'm changing my gym time 
to 7 a.m. instead of 5 a.m. So that way I can see the light come up and that's not an excuse. So it's all these different struggles that keep coming and, you know, you're getting hit from life this way and hit from life that way. But yet and still, you have to pour into other people day in and day out. When I, I talk to a bunch of different other people who want to start their credit repair business and I mentor those women or a business period, you know, mentoring other people to their level of success. And people are like, oh my God, you know, people look and say, oh, I want that life or what you're doing is amazing. But they don't know the struggles, right? They don't they know, say, yeah. They don't know the backstory. Here, they don't know my story, right? Mm -hmm. and, it's so many things that you go through the nights nice that you're, you're crying because you're frustrated or when I, I just shared with somebody else who I prayed for earlier today. And I was like, I understand what you're going through when you say you want to keep going regardless of the depression, because if you don't, it'll get worse because it was times in my depression where literally um, my, my now husband, he never really knew about depression until dealing with me. So God used that um, as a, a, a journey and a boot camp as we help other married couples. But in that, he, me telling him and having to explain to him how debilitating and paralyzing depression can be for something so simple. I mean, as far as folding a shirt or picking up a shoe and putting it back where it belonged, it would take me hours if I got it done at all. Yeah. Because it would be so hard for me to come up out of it. So imagine trying to deal with depression, deal with everyday life and, you know, trying to get out the old mentality and everything like that. Because now you're getting more finances, your, your business is going, but still having to run a business. And as an entrepreneur being in control of my own time, I can either choose to be depressed and not get out my bed and do different things, or I can choose to keep pushing and fighting. And sometimes, you know, those, those days are a little bit more of a struggle, but the transparency of me telling my story and how God, like you say, Lady Omanessa, prepared me for all of this because it wasn't my first time I had to walk away from a corporate job to start my business. The last time I walked away from it, God told me to. He just out and out told me to walk away from this job that I had worked so hard for. Like I had the job that everybody seeks, right? Where you finally hit a level, they're paying for your car, they're paying for mm -hmm. your gas, they're paying for everything you can yeah, think good of. Good job. You know, good job, right? Good like, job. Listen, when you're gonna go, how you go? And if I travel, I had my rental car, everything. Like, I felt like I was living the life then, and God just told me one day, Yeah, so I need you to walk away by this date. Now, you know, anybody who's has had a conversation with God, sometimes you ask him for a question and you're, you feel like he can't hear you, he didn't hear you, like the number, did we lose connection or something, God? Because I can't hear you. <laughs> really. That was loud and clear, and I just knew it wasn't for me because I love what I did. You know, I love the place I was in my life. My And the Lord literally told me to walk away. And I had wow. that conversation with myself to, that was years ago prior to starting my business to then when I had to walk away and start the business and really trust in him for that. I was like, well, God, you prepared me. You did it last. Like I had something to go off of in my own life. So I look at those struggles and look back at those struggles and to help somebody, like I know what it felt like. I still struggle with that, but I'm using a different terminology of I used to. I'm still yeah. talking back to it. I'm praying against that. You know, those are things that you need to do. I'm putting myself around a Kelly Miles, a Lady Omanessa to make sure that I'm, I'm pushing myself and I'm going and I can be uh, filled with someone else and, you know, be able to be a human, right? Just a human mm -hmm. sometimes. And not Inesha Bradshaw or the wife or the mom. And then I can pour into somebody else and learn how to, that self-care is so important. I don't mean just self-care, you know, then you hear it, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about self-care, whereas though um, I went to a women's prayer conference a couple of weeks ago and I didn't take anybody with me. Like, yeah, I could have took somebody else. I was like, no, I mean, this, this This is me and God. This is me and whoever's going to pour in at this moment. So, it's I mean, iron it's, like sharpening. it's iron sharpened if iron. That's what it is because we need each other. We get our weak moments because we're human. You know what I'm saying? We get to those moments because there's a lot that goes on and it's heavy. And the one thing that I that I had went to a women's conference before and somebody said to me, the devil don't get to talk to you. We can't allow him to just cut you because he talks to you if we allow him to. And so right. he don't get to talk to you. So this is the right. things that we have to replay. And not only that, but and then we're going to go to another break. And then um, Lady Omanessa, I want you to come in and I want you to tell us a little bit about what exactly it is when you're going through these struggles. Like, how do you keep pushing forward, even though you, you're laying hands on people and healing them, but yet you're still not healed? What what helps you to push through and keep pushing? But before we go there, 
you know, I just wanted to say that it's so important that we realize that a lot of times the people, the, the enemy, he he doesn't he, he can't do much because he doesn't have as much power as people try to give him. But what he'll do is he'll place a thought into your mind. It's not your thought. It's his thought. But because you hear it in your mind and it sounds like your voice, you keep listening to it. You start to believe the lie that the enemy is telling you. And we have to stop doing it. We have to stop believing the lies when he says, yeah, well, oh, you know, you're, you're not good enough. Nobody's listening. Nobody wants to hear that you shouldn't be in this author anthology what do you have to offer when god has given you a story and an anointing and our story is not for us it's for other people so we have to keep reminding ourselves not to allow the enemy to talk to us you just uh, hold on you don't get to talk to me go go somewhere else not here so before we get ready to go to um to you lady omanessa and just talking a little bit about your relatability and how um, when you're going through these struggles, what is it that keeps you pushing in spite of the fact that you face these challenges? And you, um, Inesha, you'll speak also about what is it that keeps you pushing when you still have those moments? Because depression doesn't just automatically go away. It's a process. It's a journey that you have to continue to fight through. What is it that keeps you fighting and pushing? So we'll come back right after this and we'll start talking with you, Lady Omanessa. <laughs> All right, so we are back and you are watching the Queen's Lair Christian Talk Show. And today we have with us Lady Omanessa as well as Ignatia Bradshaw, who are also co-authors of Rise Up Women Who Lead, Building Legacy Anthology of 33 Women. So we are getting ready to go talk to Lady Omanessa. And Lady Omanessa, we just want to hear a little bit about when you're going through your struggles and you're dealing with the things in life, what is it that pushes you forward and keeps you going despite all of the challenges that you're going through? Okay. Well, one of the things for me is voice. One is the voice of God and then the voice of your support system. So one of my support systems is Dr. Tina. And, um, and so I'm grateful that she put me in this book, but it's important that you hear the voice of God. And mm -hmm. so I wrote like three points that have helped me. Number one is you stay down to rise up and staying down to rise up sounds ironic, but that pretty much means to slow down, like, like to slow down to, to humble yourself and allow yourself to really, really experience what it is. I have a friend of mine who just lost his brother and he called me today and he's just so frustrated that he's not over it. And his brother died like two weeks ago and I've lost mm -hmm. a mother and I work on the dementia floor. So I I'm burying pe people on a daily basis. So I know that you're not just going to get over. As a matter of fact, like it's been four years and I have not gotten over my mother's death. You just don't get over grief like, like, right. that. you know, but it's a process. Yeah. Him, Yes. But what I told him is exactly what I do, which is I allow that thing to hit me. And I know that if you're raised in in religion, in very strong religion, I know that that will sound ridiculous because we are supposed to bind the devil and bind the voice of Satan. And yeah, don't work like that. I get that. But you yeah. do have to allow yourself to sink into the situation and ask why, how, what, when, there, like, there is a reason why you are in that situation. There is a reason why you are knocked down. Maybe you spent way too much. Maybe you shouldn't have spent that money at all. Maybe you shouldn't even have answered that phone at all. Maybe you shouldn't have made that decision. Maybe whatever you are going through right now is actually a, cons a consequence and not a coincidence. Maybe mm. now, now maybe it is left field. It came from nowhere and you truly are a hundred percent a victim. There is still a lesson to be learned in that situation. So the first thing that I do is that I lay low and I stay down 
in order to rise up. The second thing that I do is I sleep. Literally, I sleep. I am a coach and I'm deep on psychology. And I will tell you that when you are worried, when you are going through through emotional upheavals, your cortisol levels are out of control. Your, your hormones are out of control and they are imbalanced. And some people suffer from what we call psychosomatic illness. So to you, like it's just a cough, but that cough is actually a manifestation of your bitterness or is a manifestation of your anger or is a manifestation of something else. You know, yes, you are sick, but that particular sickness is coming from the condition of your heart. When you sleep, your levels normalize and they balance. When you sleep and you drink water, your body heals. It heals. And so... <laughs> And so now because of all of my traveling and because of everything that I do, I am not a worker to take off work. I just don't take off work. I just don't, excuse me. I don't call off work. I just don't pick up the phone and call off work. I, I am always at work. Why? Because when I go to work, then I accrue my PTOs because I have to travel. But yesterday morning, my body was so tired because I worked the night shift. So when I got home at past seven o'clock, my body was aching, my, my mind and just, I was tired. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so, so I'm going to call and I'm going to call off. And there was this guilt in me. How can you do that? You know that you don't call off. Look, when you are on a journey of rising up, you would have to listen to your body and you mm -hmm. will have to tone or completely shut the voices of people shut the voice of doubt and shut the voice of guilt. I picked up that phone and I called work and I said, I will work a double on so-and-so day if I have today off. Boom. It was given to me like that. When you love yourself enough and you give yourself space to rise up, the earth will open the world and everything will accommodate your request. And something that like they could have said no, because it is a Friday night. You know, yesterday was a Friday night. That's not a night to call off. That's just not the night to call off. But when and you got the time, favor of God. When you <laughs> have the favor of God and when you have, and, and, and when you are authentic, you see, like my calling mm -hmm. out was not to go party. You know, like my, right. like I needed, I needed, I needed to call out. I needed to sleep. I envisioned myself sleeping to Saturday morning, which I'm not going to do at work. And do you know that I went to bed at 7 p.m. totally on plan, and I slept for 11 hours. Oh, that's woke up beautiful. This morning and I should came to your house, <laughs> <laughs> and that was 11 hours because I envisioned that I. I needed to sleep. So in order for you to rise up, you would also have to be fair to your body. You would have to be fair to your mind. You will have to sleep. So your levels, your hormones and everything could be leveled. And you're not just, just irritated and just acting all crazy when you're already in a situation. And then lastly, what has helped me? Well, a lot has helped me. But what I wrote down is, <laughs> you, kneel, is you kneel down to rise up. You pray to rise up. And you don't pray like a beggar. You pray like a lover. Yeah. Yeah, don't beg. Yes. You, 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 like, you know how you talk to your man, like to somebody you love, you know? You just know that he's going to give you that thing, and you don't, don't say it a million times because he didn't hear you the first time. No. And you thank him, and you caress him, and you tease him. And, and that, and that's something that I'm beginning to learn with God is that God wants to give me that thing is that God has already planned it for me as a surprise. And so I am so knocked down because I can't even see that there is a resurrection, but I do trust that I will rise. So I just keep reminding him, Hey, like it's about that time, you know, but give me the strength Give me the strength to hold on until then. And then there's one last thing. Like the Bible says that use what you have in your hand. You are so knocked down and you're staying so low because you're not using what's in your hand. A lot of people are not. A lot of people don't realize that that grain of salt 
you can completely like that grain of salt could feed like 10 people and you could start that catering business just with a grain of salt. There is something that you have. Open your closet. Turn on your phone. There is something that you have. You could write that book. You could sing that song. There is something so little. There is a fragment that remains. Yes, you may have lost all of this, but there is something that remains. And as long as you have something that remains, if you lost 99 and you have one, you could add it to something else. And mm -hmm. that something else could be plus this, plus that. You could add that one to something else and then it will multiply. So stay low. Sleep, literally, drink water. If you can change your diet, and I know that to you, it's like, oh, so what does this have to do? Look, you have to stay alive to stay risen. <laughs> so, I mean, so, okay, so like now you rise up, but it's going to be easy for you to fall down physically when you are not fit. Eating right, eating a lot of vegetables, drinking a lot of water, sleeping on time, and forgiving. Oh, yes, forgiving that's a big people. one. That is a big one, but not just forgiving people, but forgiving yourself and not letting access because I am just such a good Christian. And because I was just raised to, 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 to just love everybody, you know, as a pastor and as a pastor's <laughs> daughter, I just, I just loved everybody. I'm just now learning that it's okay to forgive without giving access again. Oh yes. Absolutely. Again. And yes. don't feel bad about that, but and please yes. forgive. Because if mm -hmm. you don't forgive, you will be knocked down spiritually and you will be knocked down physically because unforgiveness does affect your body. And also not only that, yes, and not only that, it eats at you psychologically because you can't yeah. forgive. You're allowing that to become like a festering sore that's constantly eating at you, constantly thinking about it. Whenever something similar happens and with a different person, you're, it's eating at you. You automatically go back to that place. It causes you to, um, to start to not just physically feel it, but you start to mentally and emotionally, it sticks with you. And it's almost like you can't really grow and move past it because that one little thing is holding on to you. And it was something that I had heard before is that if somebody came over to you and they stabbed you in your stomach and you gripped their hand, okay, and you're holding that, that knife in your knife. stomach, <laughs> yeah. that person can let go and walk away, but you're still holding the knife in your stomach. So because you're still holding the knife in your stomach, that's a form of holding on to the unforgiveness and it's continuing to bleed. Now you can't, you can't heal with the knife stuck in your stomach. So you have to eventually look down and at your hand and see that your hand is the one that's holding that wound open, continuing to allow it to bleed. And you have to take it out so that you can allow yourself to heal. You can't heal if you're holding on to the pain and the hurt that caused that wound in the first place. And it sounds to me like what you're saying is allow yourself to be human when you're going through things. It's okay allow, to be human. Yeah. We're not supposed to be these high people sitting up on this pedestal. No, we're human beings. We have real emotions. We have real feelings. When we get hurt, we get hurt just like everybody else. So allow yourself to feel that pain and go through that and then grow through that. Don't stay there. You can go through it and then grow through it. And as you grow through it and you say your prayers and you're asking God, don't ask God. The Bible says, asking it shall be given to you. Seeking ye shall find. Knocking the door shall be opened unto you. The Bible also says to come boldly to the throne. It doesn't come saying, this is funny because this is what my bishop, he says all the time, Bishop John Emerson, he says, oh Lord, I'm just so tired. God, please help me. I don't want to have to go through this. No, but don't go to God praying like that. Lord, I declare and decree because prayer is not just asking God for things. Prayer is actually giving God his word back to him because the Bible says that um, to, 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 what does it say? Speak these things that be not as though they were. And it's not to say that he's a magician and is going to give you everything that you, you want all the time, as long as it's aligned with God's word. But we need to speak God's word back to him because it says he was word will not return back unto, uh, unto him void. So when you speak the word and say, Lord, I'm hungry and you said you were Jehovah Jireh, you were going to provide for me, then you can stand flat foot and bold and say that I know God is going to provide for me because that's what he says. But we have to align yes. 
with what God's word says. We have to make sure that when we're coming to him, like a father, you know that your, your parent is going to take care of you. If you go mm -hmm. to school and you say, I need a notebook and I need a pencil and I need a book bag to carry it in, you can best believe that that parent is a, a good parent is going to make sure that they have that. You can make sure that your parent is going to make sure you got lunch money on your account or if you don't have lunch money, you're going to have a sandwich in your bag. So just like we know that God, that I, we are going to take care of our kids when you have them. He's going to take care of us because we are yes. his children. We are heirs to his throne as well. So just wanted to thank you guys so much for coming on. We're getting ready to wrap up, but I want you guys to take about two minutes and tell us a little bit about what you want the readers to get from your story when they read in the book. Just two minutes. Tell us a little bit about what you want them to get. Now, don't give them too much because we want them to get the book. Y'all got to make sure y'all go buy the book, okay? Go buy the book. Check out Amazon. Check out the different platforms. Go, excuse me, buy, buy the book so that y'all can read the full story and get the impact from everybody's story that's in there. But for these two minutes, I want to hear what you want people to get out of your story. And we'll talk, let's go back to you, Anisha. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Um, real quick, one thing that um, in my chapter I really wanted people to get was the woman who was ready. And, you know, we get in these, I talked about depression, I talked about my struggles. And I, I really wanted to talk to the women, the men, the, the person that says, you know what, I'm ready to show up. I'm ready to show out. I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of settling. You know, the person that said, you know, I'm tired of looking at the glass half empty or half full, but I want my cup to run it over. So my chapter was dedicated to those people, the people who are ready and realize that you have and, and, and are more than enough and you're equipped to pursue and fulfill your God-given will. I wanted um, that person to know that regardless of the struggle, regardless of what you said, that his will is going to be done in your life. And if you're obedient enough to walk in what he's telling you to do, then his plan and his purpose is going to be fulfilled. And that's when we can really walk in the, the, the scripture where it says, no, I have seen nor ear have heard nor has it entered in the heart of man what God has for you. I mm -hmm. did not see myself as a business owner. I did not see myself as a credit specialist, nationally renowned, will be world renowned. I did not see myself nationally as an author or a marriage counselor or any <laughs> of these things, especially being divorced, right? So it was so many things that I didn't see myself. But when I walked in alignment with what God's word says and what he yes. says and, and really building that relationship with God, I just saw a new me and I've been able to walk in it ever since. So that's the things that I use to keep pushing and keep going when I'm struggling. And I'm hoping that my story, someone can build um, from it because we overcome by one another's testimony. And yes. that's what I want someone to get from my chapter on today. Yes, that is big right there. We overcome by our testimony. And I think that's amazing because what you ladies are doing is sharing your testimony. And I guarantee you that somebody is dealing with the same situations that you guys are have, are talking about in your book that is going to help them, even if it's one person. But that's OK, because one can reach a thousand, two can reach ten thousand. So let's go to you, Lady Omanessa, and tell us what you want people to get out of your story. There is a season for everything. There is a season for everything. So wherever you are right now, it, it will pass. Mm -hmm. Where you are right now was not where you were last year. So you see how things changed? Some things have changed. You probably got a new job or you probably got pregnant or you were, were finally able to move or you were able to confront that situation or you're just in a different environment something has changed and sometimes we don't see the things that have changed because we are so focused on the things that haven't changed so by the time that you finish reading my chapter you will be encouraged to know that things really do flip things really do change and just hold on stay alive like there was a time in my life that i was suicidal and what kept mm. me here was that i wanted to be alive to see what all of the fuss was about <laughs> I mean like what is the yes like I need to be alive to actually see what no, I miss nothing. yes I don't want to <laughs> miss it 
I, I want to be alive to see what the opposition was about. Why was it here in the first place? I have to be alive to see that. And so mm -hmm. that's what I want to leave with you is stay alive. You have to stay alive to see it. Stay alive to see it and know that it didn't happen to you. It's happening for you. Think about what mm -hmm. you can build with it. Mm -hmm. Use your pain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Out of your pain can come your purpose, but you can't mm -hmm. just stay in that pain. You have to go through it and grow through it. So thank out you so pain much. These chapters. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> out of the pain. Can, <laughs> and just be encouraged, everybody, because we all have a story. We all have something that we have gone through or are still going through that God is birthing in us. We are in a birthing season and we have to go through those labor pains. And as you go through those labor pains, you will come out with a beautiful little baby at the end. And even if you don't have a physical baby, God is birthing in you ideas, businesses, all kinds of things that he has for you to do. But like Lady Omanessa said, you got to make sure you're taking care of yourself physically, spiritually, and emotionally. So make sure you guys do that. Stay tuned for the next show, which is going to be next Saturday, 11 o'clock next Saturday, though. Five o'clock was today. Next Saturday will be 11 o'clock. Make sure you guys check us out so that we can share with you more information about the authors and tune in the same platform. It's just a different time. And take care, you guys. We appreciate you so much for joining the show, ladies. We love you guys so much and thank you for all that you're offering. All right, you guys take care. Thank you. watching the queen's lair stay tuned for the next episode